Hello everyone and welcome our channel, 10 Minutes Exploration. Today we are going to explore one of the most baffling and tragic aviation mysteries of all time, the disappearance of Malaysian Flight MH370. On March 8, 2014, a Boeing 777 operated by Malaysia Airlines took off from Kuala Lumpur, bound for Beijing. The flight was carrying 239 people from 15 countries. It was expected to land in Beijing at 6.30 a.m. after a six-hour flight. But something went terribly wrong. At 1.19 a.m., the last voice communication from the cockpit was recorded when the co-pilot said good night, Malaysian 370, to her traffic control. A few minutes later, the plane's transponder, which sends out signals identifying the flight, was switched off. The plane then veered off course, flying westward across the Malay Peninsula and the Strait of Malacca, before turning southward over the Indian Ocean. For the next seven hours, the plane flew on without any contact with the ground until it ran out of fuel and presumably crashed into the sea. But where exactly did it crash? And why did it deviate from its planned route? And who was responsible for this mysterious disappearance? These are some of the questions that have haunted the families of the victims, the investigators, and the public for more than seven years. Despite extensive searches covering millions of square kilometers of ocean, only a few pieces of debris have been found, mostly on the shores of Africa and Indian Ocean Islands. No trace of the main wreckage or the black boxes has been located. In this video, we will examine some of the clues, theories, and evidence that have emerged over the years and try to shed some light on this perplexing mystery. We will also look at some of the latest findings by a British aeronautical engineer who claims to have pinpointed a new possible crash site based on a combination of different data sets. So buckle up and get ready for a fascinating journey into the hidden mysteries of Malaysian Flight MH370. The initial search efforts focused on the South China Sea and the Gulf of Thailand, where the plane was last seen on radar. However, after analyzing satellite data from a British company called Inmarsat, it was determined that the plane had flown southward over the Indian Ocean for several hours after losing contact. The satellite data consisted of a series of pings or handshakes between the plane and a satellite orbiting above the Indian Ocean. These pings did not contain any information about the plane's location or altitude, but they did indicate how far away it was from the satellite at each point in time. By using a technique called Doppler analysis, which measures how the frequency of a signal changes as it moves relative to an observer, it was possible to estimate two possible arcs or paths that the plane could have taken, a northern arc stretching from Thailand to Kazakhstan, and a southern arc stretching from Indonesia to the southern Indian Ocean. The northern arc was soon ruled out by checking with radar and military authorities in those countries, who confirmed that they had not detected any unidentified aircraft in their airspace. The southern arc was then narrowed down further by using additional data from Inmarsat and other sources, such as radar data from Malaysia and Thailand, fuel consumption calculations, and ocean currents. The search area was divided into two phases. Phase 1 covered an area of 60,000 square kilometers in a remote part of the southern Indian Ocean known as the Seventh Arc, where the plane was believed to have exhausted its fuel and crashed. Phase 2 covered an area of 120,000 square kilometers adjacent to Phase 1, where the plane could have glided further after running out of fuel. The search efforts involved dozens of ships and aircraft from several countries, as well as sophisticated underwater vehicles and sonar equipment. The search was coordinated by the Joint Agency Coordination Centre JAC, a body established by the Australian government to oversee the operation. However, after more than two years and hundreds of millions of dollars spent, no sign of the plane was found in either phase. The search was officially suspended in January 2017. While the underwater search failed to locate the main wreckage or the black boxes, some pieces of debris believed to be from MH370 have been found washed up on various shores around Africa and Indian Ocean Islands. These include pots of the wing, tail, engine cowling, and cabin, 
These pieces of debris have been examined by experts from various countries and organizations who have confirmed that they are consistent with MH370's model and serial numbers and that they show signs of damage consistent with a high-speed impact with water. However, the debris findings have not provided much insight into what happened to the plane or where it crashed. The debris could have drifted thousands of kilometers from the crash site, depending on the ocean currents and winds. Moreover, the debris does not indicate whether the plane was under human control or not when it crashed, or whether it broke up in midair or upon impact. The lack of conclusive evidence and answers has given rise to many theories and speculations about what happened to MH370. Some of these theories are based on scientific analysis and logical deduction, while others are based on conspiracy, fantasy, or even paranormal phenomena. Here are some of the most popular and controversial theories. Pilot suicide. One of the most widely discussed theories is that the pilot, Captain Zahri Ahmad Shah, deliberately diverted the plane from its course and crashed it into the ocean, killing himself and everyone else on board. This theory is based on several factors, such as his personal and professional background, his home flight simulator, and the flight path and maneuvers. However, this theory has also been challenged by other experts and by his family and friends, who have defended his character and reputation. They have argued that there is no conclusive evidence or motive for him to commit such a heinous act, and that he was a devoted father, husband, and professional who loved flying. Hijacking. Another theory is that the plane was hijacked by someone on board, either for political, religious, or personal reasons. This theory is based on several factors, such as the passenger list, the cockpit intrusion, and the possible demands or messages. However, this theory has also been challenged by other experts and by the lack of credible evidence or claims of responsibility. They have argued that there is no indication of any struggle or distress on board, and that none of the passengers or crew had any known links to terrorism or criminal activity. Mechanical failure. Another theory is that the plane suffered a catastrophic mechanical failure that caused it to lose power, communication, and control. This theory is based on several factors, such as the possibility of a fire, an electrical malfunction, a decompression event, or a structural failure. However, this theory has also been challenged by other experts and by the lack of physical evidence or distress signals. They have argued that the plane was well-maintained and had no history of major problems, and that it would be extremely unlikely for such a failure to occur without leaving any trace or warning. While the official search has been suspended, some independent researchers and experts have continued to analyze the available data and look for new clues. One of them is Richard Godfrey, a British aeronautical engineer who claims to have pinpointed a new possible crash site based on a combination of different data sets. He combined satellite data from Inmarsat with Boeing performance data, oceanographic floating debris drift data, and radio signal data from a network called Juice Burnett. He used these data sets to calculate the speed, altitude, direction, and position of MH370 at different points in time. He then used a technique called Bayesian inference to filter out the most likely scenarios from the possible ones. He concluded that MH370 crashed into the Indian Ocean at around 33 degrees south and 95 degrees east, about 2,000 kilometers west of Perth, Australia. He said that this location is consistent with all the available data and evidence. He hopes that his findings will persuade the authorities to resume the search and find MH370 once and for all. The disappearance of MH370 remains one of the most mysterious and tragic events in aviation history. It has left behind many unanswered questions and unresolved grief for the families of the victims. It has also raised many issues and challenges for the aviation industry and the international community. We may never know for sure what happened to MH370 or why it happened, but we can hope that someday we will find out the truth and learn from this tragedy. Thank you for watching this video. 
If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And don't forget to leave your comments below. What do you think happened to MH370? Do you believe any of these theories? Do you have any other theories? Let us know your thoughts. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.